How's the body, first of all? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Um, obviously picked up a small bit of a, a niggle there the last couple of days, but I was back running again yesterday and um, looking to push it on a bit more today and during the next couple of days, so not nothing too serious, thank God. Good stuff. Um, Keith, what, what gives you confidence that this Ireland team can go where no Ireland team has gone in the past by winning the quarter-final this weekend? Um, I suppose it's the, the journey we've been on really the last number of years, you know, the last three years, two years under Andy, what, we, what we've achieved, the places where we've gone and the places we've won and obviously the competitions we've won as well. So, um, yeah, there's some good con good confidence there. Um, you know, I suppose the consistency of our, our performances have been um, have been really good and we know the challenge that 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 uh, that comes on on Saturday against New Zealand. Um, you know, no doubt they'll be they'll be um, highly emotional and, and looking for revenge and and bring everything they have. Just a quick final one for me. Um, you were obviously around a bit longer than some of the other lads in the squad. Like he had some tough days against New Zealand, like back in, in the day, whatever. But how important are the younger guys to, to kind of bring in like a fearlessness to? you know, playing the All Blacks and these different kind of challenges that you have. Like, I mean, how important are those guys? We just had Roland Keller there, he's one. Yeah, it's, we we some lads in the squad who are lucky enough who who have beat New Zealand more times than they have, have lost them. Some of them haven't, haven't lost them. So, um, yeah, their confidence mixed with, with our experience um, as well, that we we can bring them down to a level head as well if, if, they, if, they, if they start thinking too confident. But, that's not in our in our squad, but um, look, I think I know, and the lads know if if, if we can play and fire all cylinders, um, you know, it would be a really good test match on on Saturday, and 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 you know, we we have to back ourselves really. Um, we can't show show you away from what what needs to be done, and you know, we all we can do is pr prepare all week and 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 see where it takes us. Cheers. Thanks. Uh, Kieran Kennedy. Hey, Good, how are you? Um, remember how you felt the first time you faced a New Zealand hacker? And in your experience over the year, is it something that you can draw energy from? And yeah, I think the first time maybe was 2010 in, in Crow Park. I think it was maybe my second cap. It was. Um, you know, it was a, a surreal experience to like growing up watching them. They've they've con conquered the world of rugby since since I was a young lad. And um, yeah, I think it was only up until last year we we didn't really understand what the, what the hack it meant. You know, it was it can come across as as quite intimidate intimidating. But you know, speaking to to Rua Tapoki down in New Zealand last year, he I suppose. He let us know the inside of the hacker and and what it means and you know how we how we can draw from I suppose our ancestors and our family as well. It's, it's not meant to intimidate. It's you know it's a it's a tradition of theirs and you know we we've got to look at it as how they're looking at it as well. Like you know we're we're going into war war as well as uh, a battle and. Um, you know, we draw on our, our families and stuff from that as well. And when you think of the years you spent working with Joe Schmidt, what would you say was the one area of your game where you had the greatest influence? Um, I suppose, I suppose dealing with pressure really. Um, you know, he was. I suppose not even dealing with pressure, but you know, showing me how to prepare right for a game. So. I don't feel pressure and get nervous because I've I've prepared and you're not leaving everything to last minute. He made me think about the game differently and how important it is from from one to fifteen and one to twenty three to be to be in sync for 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 a team to win. And I suppose he helped us get the the maximum of the of the talent that we had. Thanks, Thanks. Ashley. Hi, Keith. How's things? Good. How are you? Good now. Um, Ian Foster has said that uh, New Zealand have been tapping into Joe Schmidt's knowledge on Ireland and that he believes that his presence in the All Blacks camp now could be key to this quarter final. 
what would you make of that? And do you think that Joe would have a big influence or is this a bit of a, a new era of team now? Um, yeah, I don't think Joe would know anything about this squad. We're, we're a completely different squad. He probably knows things about individuals, but again, I think we've we've all changed our habits under this coach and staff. And you know, we we genuinely don't use any of the habits that 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 Joe has taught us. So, um, look, he he, he might have a thing on a couple of individuals, but. We're certainly not the, the the same team that that played under under Joe. And just for yourself, sorry, I might have missed it. How are you doing? And uh, your injury as well? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I ran, I ran yesterday. I'm going to run today, and please God, train tomorrow. So it's um, it's it's all positive. Thank God. Oh, brilliant! Good stuff. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley. Derek. Uh, hi, Keith. Uh, this is Jerry from Stark. Um, just to make myself unpopular with you, um, the last time you played the All Blacks was the wrong game in New Zealand. Could you just tell us some sort of difference between that first game in Auckland and then the other two games, or what the penny drop was, or, 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 or what, what the feeling was between game one and then change of mind game two? And because you win the two other tests by more than one score. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure Derek Jones to have, um, um, yeah, I, th I, th I think we just, after, after that loss, the first loss in Auckland, we, we just, we just sat down and have a conversation that, you know, I suppose we didn't really fire that many shots in the, in the first test, um, you know, we scored one or two tries, but to to play like that for for 80 minutes, we knew we had to be on every moment. Um, you know, we lost a lot of moments in the, in that first test, and you know, we had a good chat and we understood what it take, take, took to beat him. And you know, I think it it came through on the on the second and third test. So um, yeah, we we know that for 80 minutes and for most moments, we we, we nearly have to be perfect and to. To, to beat him, and I think that's what happened um, in the second and third test. Could you just remind us, just personally, um, um, the first choice left winger, Paul Keith Earls, doesn't get to play in Chicago, which is remarkable if you look at you play all the other games. Was there a reason you didn't play in Chicago for that, that historic time? <laughs> yeah, there was. I think you know that reason. Yeah, I was, I was suspended for the Chicago game. Oh. Thanks, thanks very much. Sorry, I put it off. Yeah. Um, Mike, Michael, Michael Glennon, then Ollie Ritchie, please. Hi, Keith. How are you? Michael here, an RT. Hi, Michael. Um, I was just asking Ronan before, and obviously he said he was in school uh, in 2016 when Ireland won for the first time. But you have spanned both uh, years, the, the pre Chicago and post Chicago. Do you view all, the All Blacks differently? Does it, something change then? Uh, you know, do you see them as just another team now? No, I, I still think they're they're world class thing. I think the the view is different, different on ourselves. Um, you know, as Irish people, we can lack a lot of a lot of confidence and and be, I suppose, a small bit too humble at times. Um, you know, we've done an awful lot of work on ourselves, and the coaches have done a lot of works on, on getting us to to believe that. Uh, that we can play a certain brand of rugby that can make us compete with with anyone in the world. So I think that's that's the most important thing for us was, I suppose, getting us to start believing in ourselves. The 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 rugby that we can play can um, you know if we get it right on any day, which which we've shown over the last number of years that we can we can compete and and and, and beat most teams. The excitement is obviously going to build up. Between fans and media and all the stuff in the press, will 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 the camp will the squad do anything this week slightly different just to release a little bit of pressure? Will you train less? Is there anything planned just to make sure that you're going in at the exact right pitch? Yeah, no, we we keep everything the same. You know, I think that that sometimes teams make the mistakes of. Um, of changing teams or changing trainings for for a, for an important match, thinking they have to do anything different. We've we've never done anything different um, over the years. You know, we we've got a, I think a good weekly schedule that that allows us to find the right balance of of relaxing, you know, recovering and and training hard as well. So 
yeah, I've I've no doubt that we're not going to change anything this week. Best of luck, Keith. Hope to get on out. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks. Final questions, uh, Ollie Ritchie there. Ireland have never made it past the quarterfinal stage of a World Cup before, but how much did that series victory in New Zealand last year set this team up for performing and winning on the biggest stage? Yeah, it was um, it, it was huge. It, it was something that was, you know, I think I think it was the Australians that done it in 1986, maybe won a Test series before us. So that was. That, that was massive. We drew massive confidence from that, but you know this this tournament is is a is a different animal. Um, you know we I know we have we have beat New Zealand a, a few times the last couple of years, but they've obviously taught us one or two lessons as well in in between that and and, and beaten us by more than one score. So look, we're under no illusion that that what, what's coming the weekend and, and all we can do is look after our own preparation and look after this week because the past doesn't mean anything, the future doesn't mean anything. All, all we have is, um, you know, this week's training and, and I've no doubt a massively competitive game on, on Saturday. And what's your analysis, I suppose, and what you're reflecting on from last year's game so far? What, what has that told you about the sort of team you're going to face on Saturday maybe compared to that team you beat in New Zealand last year. Yeah, like it's 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 no secret that you know pe people speak about New Zealand the last I suppose the last year or two that you know the people think they've dipped in 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 the performances. But what we've seen in this World Cup, you know, they're they're starting to come back with a roar and um, they've had some incredible performances. I think obviously after the. The French game, it's obviously ignited some some spark in them. You know, the World Cup, you know, in the last couple of years has been New Zealand's New Zealand's tournament. Have always been there thereabouts. So, um, yeah, look, I think I think you know they're they're starting to hit their their stride again the, in the last couple of weeks. And you know, as I said, it's it's going to be a a very tough game. We're certainly not. You know, undermining New Zealand. You know, you'd be a very silly team to do that.